What's going on, guys? The Next.js framework will allow us not only to route pages based on React components, but also to route a backend API. In this video, we're going to create some basic API endpoints to provide backend functionality with the Next.js framework. Remember to subscribe to the channel and let's get started. On a previous video, we already created some pages. We created the index page, the about page, and we also created some pages related to the jobs application to handle the shop ID, questions connected to the shops. So if we want to create API endpoints for this application, we need to add new files here within this API folder. So first I'm going to create a data file. I'm going to call it data.js and I'm going to grab the contents from here. This is an array with shops with an identifier, a title, a company and allocation. So I'm going to paste that in here and I'm going to create an index file within the API folder. This is index.js. So in order to create an API endpoint here, we need to export a function, export default async. And here we can create an arrow function like this. In particular, this function is going to receive the request and the response parameters, request and response. And let's say that we want to retrieve the list of shops that we have within this file. So first we need to import that array. So this is import shops from, and this is data.js. And here we can just return that array of shops. So this is response.status. Here we can return the 200 status code. And then we can return the shops array using a JSON format. So this is JSON. And we can pass the array in here. This is shops. And before starting the server, I'm going to create a new folder. This will be shops. And I'm going to move the index file there. Okay, now I'm going to start the server. So this is npm run dev. And we will be able to access the API endpoint by following localhost 3000 slash API slash shops. So I'm going to grab this URL and I'm going to open Postman. So I'm going to paste the URL here and this is slash API slash shops and this is going to return the list of shops, as we can see here. Okay, now let's stop the server and let's create a new endpoint to retrieve a shop by ID. Okay, let's create a new file. So this will be square brackets, shop ID dot JS. And here again, I'm going to import the shops array And I need to create another function. This is export default async. And here I'm going to receive the request and the response. This would be an arrow function. And here we can filter from the array based on the shop ID. So first I need to get the shop ID from the request. So this is const shop ID. This is equals to request dot shop ID. And now I'm going to use the filter function to get the specific shop for the ID that I receive in the request. So this is const, this is result equals to shops dot shops dot filter. And this is an arrow function where I'm going to filter the shop where its identifier, this is shop.id, is equals to the identifier. So this is parse int and this is shop ID like this. 
and here I'm going to add a simple condition where if result dot length is greater than zero and I'm going to return a 200 response dot status 200 dot json and I'm going to return the first element of the array so this is result at zero So if the element is not in the array, I'm going to return a 404. And this is not return, this is response like this. And here this is response dot status. And this is 404. And this is JSON. And I'm going to return a message. So this is message equals to, and here this will be shop with id dollar sign this is shop id not found and this is not request dot show id this is request dot query dot show id okay now let's run the server so this is npm run dev and now let's go to Postman. And here I'm going to pass an identifier. Let's say one. And I get the element as we can see here. And if I pass 10, for example, I'm going to receive a 404, as we can see here. And the message, shop with ID 10, not found. Okay, let's go back. And here we can also access some other properties from the request. For example, we can access the method of the request and we can use that HTTP method to create a RESTful API. And that is what I'm going to show you in the next video. So that's all I have for today. Thank you guys for watching and I see you in the next one. Take care, bye.